Welcome to the Space Shell. So that everyone can have the best planetarium experience, we kindly ask all guests to remain seated during the whole duration of the show. We request for all guests to refrain from talking, so as everyone can better hear and understand the show. Please wear your face masks properly at all times, and maintain a safe distance from other groups while inside the space shell. Should you, or your companion need to step out during the show, please locate the exit door and quietly make your way. Let us be considerate to our fellow space cadets, and follow these guidelines. We hope you have a blast. The night sky, both beautiful and mysterious. The subject of campfire stories, ancient myths and awe for as long as there have been people. Living beneath the open dark sky, the earliest humans were aware of nightly changes as planets marched across the sky, the moon waxed and waned, and occasional meteors flared across the horizon. simple early observations revealed patterns that could be depended on, leading to the first calendars. With the yearly cycle mapped out, settlements and agriculture could develop and early civilizations thrived. <coughs> At the same time, the first maps of the sky grouped the brightest stars into familiar constellations, helping to develop navigational skills, expanding trade, and aiding exploration. But the first astronomers had no real concept of the order behind the patterns of the sky. These early scientists and philosophers were still bound by a view of the cosmos that was tightly interwoven with mythology. The ancient Greeks, with their rigorous intellectual approach, took the first steps towards separating the young science of astronomy from the ancient sky myths. The greatest minds of the age, such as Pythagoras, Eratosthenes, Apollonius, and Ptolemy, helped in developing a more complete scientific system capable of predicting astronomical phenomena. By observing the apparent motion of the celestial objects around our planet, the ancient Greek astronomers placed Earth at the center of the cosmos, creating the geocentric system. Aristarchus of Samos was the first Greek astronomer to propose the heliocentric model, placing the sun rather than the Earth at the center of the known universe. But he was largely ignored for many centuries. It wasn't until the 16th century that astronomers such as Copernicus and Kepler revived Aristarchus' view. By studying the astronomical observations of the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe, supported by solid maps, the heliocentric system gained new relevance. According to this, all planets, including Earth, revolve around the Sun. However, the true revolution in astronomy took place in 1609, when Galileo became the first astronomer to turn a telescope towards the sky. 
In doing so, he broadened the horizons of the known universe and abolished once and for all the geocentric views of the ancient world. The telescope is an instrument that collects light and provides detailed images of remote and faint celestial objects. Seeing deeper and further depends on collecting more light, usually requiring larger lenses or mirrors. Today, scientists have huge telescopes, supported by state-of-the-art instrumentation and sophisticated software to study the universe and discover its secrets. ESO's very large telescope has four 8-meter mirrors, and they can detect objects as they were just a few hundred million years after the universe began in the Big Bang. <clears throat> For the best results, these giant telescopes are most often located in remote mountain regions above much of the atmosphere and away from widespread urban light pollution. With their help, we can see deep into space and through the fog of time to reveal a universe inconceivable to the people of the ancient world. A universe which is vibrantly active and violent, and where the game of life and death is played out on a scale that humbles all who observe it. In the last 50 years, we have reached out into space, leaving the bonds of gravity behind, and opened a new era of exploration. Thanks to the space program, we have seen our planet from an outsider's perspective, as a fragile, pale blue world orbiting the sun, frighteningly vulnerable in the cold and hostile environment of space. Space technology has altered our way of life and changed our perception of the world from a place defined by maps and borders to that of a small and insignificant body in space. The benefits derived from the space program have a value many times higher than the cost and effort involved. With space exploration came the technology that has placed telescopes above the atmosphere of our planet. Space telescopes that can record a fresh view of the universe observing in wavelengths that cannot penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. Each new generation of telescopes, from Galileo's first simple instruments that showed us the moons of Jupiter, to the Hubble Space Telescope, has opened new windows on the universe and challenged our understanding. Step by step, we have been displaced from the center of the world 
and placed as exiles on the edge of a vast and inhospitable universe. Today, we know that the Sun is an average dwarf star with a diameter of just under one and a half million kilometers and that it lies 150 million kilometers from Earth. The Sun is a sphere of gas with a core where temperatures and pressures are so high that nuclear fusion is triggered, converting hydrogen into helium, all the while pumping out energy into space. Energy that warms and sustains the Earth, supporting life in all its oceans and across continents. On the surface of the sun, a localized strong magnetic field forms, creating a sunspot. Here, energy can accumulate, which is then often released into space in the form of huge explosions, known as flares. Eventually, the fuel powering the core will run out, and the sun will slowly cool and expand to become a red giant, engulfing all the inner planets, including the Earth. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, a lifeless world with a very thin atmosphere. Its surface is littered with craters created by collisions with tens of thousands of asteroids and comets. In 2004, scientists sent the space probe Messenger to Mercury to study this alien world. Messenger has provided a wealth of scientific data as well as high-resolution images of the surface of the planet. Venus is roughly the same size as Earth, but its atmosphere is choked with greenhouse gases and sulfuric acid. As a result, its surface temperature reaches a searing 400 degrees Celsius. The surface of Venus is known to still be geologically active with fresh lava flows. The third planet from the sun is the Earth with its liquid water oceans and oxygen rich atmosphere. of evolved life in the solar system. The moon is our natural satellite, with a diameter roughly four times smaller than Earth's and lacking an atmosphere. The moon's surface is covered in craters, which as on Mercury, are the result of thousands of collisions during the early stages of the formation of the solar system.
The moon is the only celestial object that has been visited by manned space missions. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, only 70 million kilometers away from Earth at closest approach. Scientists have been exploring Mars systematically for the last 40 years, and we now know many of its secrets. We have mapped its surface remotely, showing its numerous craters, enormous extinct volcanoes, and its deep canyons. There was almost certainly water on the red planet long ago. Now only small quantities of underground water remain. It is possible that a simple form of life could persist somewhere below the surface. Scientists continue to explore Mars with small remote control vehicles and it will be the target of several future manned missions. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, with a diameter of more than 11 times that of the Earth. Its atmosphere is dense and very dynamic, and is mainly composed of hydrogen, helium, and methane. One easily identifiable feature of its atmosphere is the Great Red Spot, a huge storm, twice the size of Earth, which has lasted for hundreds of years. Among Jupiter's varied collection of satellites are two of particular interest. Europa, which hides a large ocean of water beneath its icy surface, and Io, with its many volcanoes and continuous lava outflows. Saturn is perhaps the most impressive planet in the entire solar system, thanks to its majestic ring system. Saturn's rings are made up of pieces of rock and ice, mainly from former satellites that were torn apart by the planet's gravity. One of Saturn's moons, Titan, is an interesting world. Scientists have detected an atmosphere rich in organic matter and a surface with lakes of liquid methane. planet from our sun is Uranus, which also has a large but less dramatic ring system. The outermost planet in the solar system, Neptune, looks quite like Uranus, yet has a much more active atmosphere. Beyond Neptune is a region containing dwarf planets such as Pluto, Eris, Mekme, and Haumea. These dwarf planets, as well as probably hundreds more as yet undiscovered, and thousands of smaller objects are located in a large zone at the edge of the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Further in, between Mars and Jupiter, the asteroid belt contains thousands of asteroids of various shapes and sizes. Space probes have managed to approach some of them and study them in detail. 
One probe even landed on the asteroid Eros and analyzed its surface. Finally, there are a huge number of celestial objects composed of ice and dust that we sometimes see from Earth as comets. In the past, their presence in the sky was thought to herald destruction and political upheaval. The Sun and its planets belong to a giant complex of at least 200 billion stars that make up our galaxy, the Milky Way. Recently, we have detected planets in orbit around other stars in our galaxy, and the study of these new and sometimes exotic worlds is a burgeoning field of observational astronomy. Stars come in many different types and sizes, but none of them live forever. Their lifetimes range from a few million to billions of years. But when their fuel is exhausted, they die. Some die in a violent manner, leaving behind exotic stellar remnants, such as white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. Stars usually form in groups called stellar clusters, which fall into two categories, globular or open clusters. Globular clusters have a high concentration of stars, tightly bound into a ball by gravity, and their age can be deduced from the distribution of the types of stars within each cluster giving astronomers a key to their history. They are very common objects within galaxies. Some giant elliptical galaxies can host up to 30,000 globular clusters.